JP Crawford's back. That's great. Everybody's happy to see that. With the return of JP, who actually did have a couple of bats on Monday, he came in the game late. He didn't start. But this is going to cause Scott Service to make some decisions with the lineup. What do we think that lineup's going to look like? We are not Scott Service. However, the two of us, Lyle and TJ, decided how would we construct this lineup? So we're going to sit here and do exactly that. I had two guesses. One with Julio staying in his normal spot and one with Julio getting moved down, potentially. That's what I have. And it's, you do, and it's you kinda, did the same thing? Okay. Well, and it's kind of <laughs> dependent on if it's a righty or lefty on the mound. Right. So uh, I'm going to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to err on the side of him not getting sent down. And so the first lineup I built, I'm putting J.P. Crawford back at the leadoff spot. Josh Rojas, by the way, two for his last 26. So the, an excuse to put a little pressure, take a little pressure off of him, would move him down in the lineup. So... JP leads off, Julio bats second, Cal bats third, Mitch Garver bats fourth, Luke Rayley bats fifth, Josh Rojas bats sixth, Jorge Polanco, assuming he's healthy, bats seventh, Dom Canzone bats eighth, and Ty France bats ninth, Lyle. (laughs) (laughs) Because no one else else really looks like a nine hitter, and, and Rojas is hitting too good overall still to drop him back down to the nine spot. So Scott, honestly... Might move, swap, uh, put Rojas at nine and shift everyone else up one, but I'm going to leave it at that for now. This sounds closer to what a left-handed lineup would look, or a a lineup would look like with a left-handed pitcher on the mound. I know you still had Rojas in this lineup, but that's the lineup I'll read first in terms of the two I wrote out. I had JP, Julio, Polanco, Cal, Garver, Haniger, Canzone, assuming Canzone and Rayleigh between those two would be the guy to hit lefties, Canzone. Mm Mm-hmm. Ty France, eight, Luis Urias, nine. So, okay, Rojas isn't in this lineup, but the one that I expect to get potentially rolled out a little bit more is the one I got to next. Well, the other one I have is a Julio being moved down in the lineup, which I know, have, is, a, I, is up to everyone's discretion on when, that's, when or if that happens this season. So this other one I have, which is there would be a righty on the mound. JP leads off. Josh Rojas, Rojas bats second, Cal bats third, Mitch Garver bats cleanup, Rayleigh fifth, Julio sixth, Polo seventh, Ty eighth, Dom Kenzo ninth. Oh, you actually moved Julio way down in yeah. the lineup. Oh, I was serious. Okay. I moved him down, but here's what mine looks like. It's not, you can put JP or Rojas wherever you want between these two. I put Rojas at one just because he's been the hotter bat this year, but The order I have against righties would go Rojas, JP, Julio third, so not that different, Cal four, Polo five, Garver six, Rayleigh seven, Ty eight, Canzo nine. Hmm. You know, Julio might not actually get moved down that far, but I see enough talk about it. So I thought thought it at least needed to be thrown in there. But overall, I think you and I come back to the same conclusion that JP is your leadoff hitter. I had Rojas as the leadoff guy in this lineup, but again, it's it's very adjustable. If, if if I see JP Crawford hitting leadoff going forward, I'd say, yeah, sure, makes sense. Yeah, he can be the leadoff hitter. He probably will be the leadoff hitter. Yeah, yeah. I, I I I would just say I would say it makes more sense right now for for JP to to lead off, and it, it's the saying that these things usually work themselves out. Like we're sitting here thinking, who's going to lead off? When JP comes back, Rojas has been so good, and then Rojas goes on a really cold streak. And that kind of kind of answers your question. Like maybe Scott Service just thinks like, okay, like Rojas has been good. It's been really fun, but I I like the idea, and it benefits the lineup more to put Rojas back in the nine hole and put JP at leadoff to hit it in front of Julio. Essentially, two guys hitting in front of Julio. It's possible, although this two for twenty six thing for Rojas. Of course, that was going to happen at some point. Did anybody expect Josh Rojas to hit 350 all year? That's not fair. No, it's not. It's so, not fair. At some point, there was going to be some. But Scott overall might just like that lineup construction better and think that gives him an opportunity to score more runs. Yeah, it's possible because if you have a really good nine hitter, it's like having a second leadoff hitter. Although, I don't think it's some slap in the face to Julio if you ask him to hit third. And no. Rojas and JP are one, two. I also don't think that's a problem. The only difference is we know Scott doesn't like to stack two lefties in a row if he if he can help it. Yeah, so that could that could create some 
maneuvering for sure. And yeah, in the lineup I have here, Canzone hits nine. So if Scott doesn't like a pocket of three straight lefties, especially late in games for relievers, then maybe they wouldn't do that. Right. And if you would say, all right, you want to split them up, but you wouldn't hit Rojas third and you wouldn't hit JP third either. Like maybe last year's version of JP could technically hit third, but we haven't seen that version of JP yet. And we'd like to get him in the leadoff spot to sort of get to that point. Right. And you wouldn't at this, you wouldn't go JP Julio Rojas or Rojas Julio JP. Like, so, you know, we'll, we'll have to see. Uh, I'm guessing on Tuesday, JP Crawford will be in the lineup judge that he played tonight and played on Monday and he was activated. So we'll see, we'll see what Scott service rolls out there. But I, I, I ultimately think the Mariners are best when they put JP in the leadoff spot where Rojas hits. I'll trust Scott service to that. If they want to hit him second. Okay. If they want to drop him down to maybe fifth. Okay. That works fine as well. Um, or if they feel like he's better suited back in the nine hole and they hit him in front of JP Crawford to walk and get, get on in front of JP who heats it, heats up and knocks him in. And then Julio hopefully eventually starts elevating the ball a little bit more and drives in both those guys as well. And ultimately would lead to a significantly more productive Mariners lineup. Josh Rojas hitting nines worked seamlessly ever since he got traded over here last year when he got traded here and they put him in the nine spot. Remember how good his August was worked yeah. perfectly flipped it right back to JP Crawford. So if you have this version of Josh Rojas and JP starts to get going, yeah, I've got no issues or quarrels with that at all to hit Rojas and nine. I was just thinking if you want to try and get him more bats, you hit him higher in the order. But if it's that important to Scott to make sure he's not stacking lefty after lefty after lefty, then maybe it makes more sense to hit Rojas nine. And that's fine. Whatever, the pro- whatever they think is going to help win them games. The problem is right now, so your two corner, your two best corner outfielders are both lefties. And then your two... The two infielders you want to be the best hitting two are both left-handed, and they both have similar, similar-ish similar offensive profiles. Profiles, JP has a little bit more power, but both him and Rojas walk quite a bit. And then, like, so, so you got to be able, you just need to be able to find a way to break up Dom, Luke, and then Rojas and JP, because they won't, they won't all hit near each other. It's probably why, again, in the lineup I threw out here, if Rayleigh hits seventh, Ty right. hits eighth, Canzone hits Would nine. Would you want to hit Rayleigh seventh for as well as he's been hitting? You could move him up. You could hit him six. That's fine, yeah. too. It does, like, that, like the, the semantics there are just it's not that big of a difference. Also, right. if a lefty's on the mound, this is not what the lineup's going to look like either. Now, the no. Mariners will see more righties than lefties. But again, with a lefty on the mound, Hanager will be in there. Urias will be in there. It's going to look different. Right. So, hey, and who would have thought roster versatility's back? I missed it. <laughs> you love to see it. They are getting pretty close to being fully healthy offensively here. JP Crawford, as of Monday night, played in the game, activated off the IL. He's back. Jorge Polanco has not gone on the IL, and they said here on Monday he was available off the bench. So, I would assume either Tuesday or Wednesday he's going to be in the lineup. And once he's back, that's that's your offense. Yeah. And you, yeah, you're right. You'd be fully healthy. It is telling that they haven't put him on the IL so far, and it's good because he got to take his trip to New York and eat pizza. So, where do you Jorge think Blanc- he went? Jorge Blanc is a big pizza guy. If you if you checked out our social clip here on Monday morning, you know that. Yeah. Uh, my hope is he went to Joe's Pizza because that is New York's best. Yeah. Yeah, that would be good. Helps heal. It helps heal. Say maybe we'll much. have to. Maybe we'll have to ask Polo the next time we we asked or talk to him or see him just because I'm sure like we were talking about this over text the other day, but you said, I'm sure he's got some spot in New York. He likes for pizza. He's such a big pizza guy, but where that is, we don't know because New York has a million good pizza spots. I'm sure most of these guys would because everyone, every American league team will take a trip there a year. So they have mm-hmm. to like have an idea and it look at it on the calendar, like four days. Three three days essentially, and then you you'll leave on the on Thursday after you play the game. But a lot of opportunity there. Yeah, yeah, there is. So <laughs> if Jorge really is a pizza connoisseur, I'm sure he carves out some time to at least get a slice during the trip. So where that is, we'll have to find out. And you and I could rattle off New York pizza places forever, but just to name the one, I hope he went to Joe's Pizza. Let's just hope it wasn't Sabaro. What what person goes to New York and actually like get Sabaro pizza? You know what's funny? 
You know, Sabaro used to have that huge shop in Times Square. Yeah. They like there's a huge Sabaro in Times Square. At least it was. There was, and I think oh, while there I was still is York, one there. There's one near there. Well, no, I was going to say while I was there this winter, I I think it's gone, which makes <laughs> a lot of sense because again, what person like you're in New York, you have a chance to get pizza and you walk into Sabaro. There's like I don't well, care. There's if you a lot. There, there are care. a lot of tourists who. But, but I don't see, care if you're, see the I don't big care if you're sign. Li- okay, but I don't care if you're living there or visiting there. There is no person who possibly in their right mind says of all the New York pizza places, we're going to Sabaro. I guarantee you there are international tourists who go to Sabaro. And then there, there might just be people who like Sabaro. Like, unfortunately. Like, it's like, why would you ever go to another burger place? Why would you go to McDonald's if you go to all these other burger places? And yet so many people still go to McDonald's. Uh, I don't know if that's the I think, same thing. No, I think I think it's I think it's pretty close. And again, I think there's a there would be a lot of tourism who people who a lot of international tourists who would think that that is a that is a New York slice. And credit to them, like if that's the New York slice they want to get, you know, all power to them. It's like if I were to go to Europe and I went to an ultimate like tourist pastry shop or something, and those people look, oh, what an idiot! Why would he ever go there? Eh, right? <laughs> again, McDonald's is so much bigger than Sbarro is. So I don't know if that's a perfect comparison. Again, like there's a Joe's Pizza in Times Square. There's other pizza places. There's a yeah, reason that right. Sbarro, there's a reason that Sbarro closed. That's all I'm going to well, say. I will. I would say it probably doesn't drive the traffic as the other places does. But okay. as long as they're open, that means someone's eating there. Right. Exactly. Well, <laughs> if we find out where Jorge Polanco gets pizza in New York, we can report back here. Yeah, we'll try. We'll try and figure out. Hopefully, no one else ate Sbarro. Let's hope. So yeah, I'll do I'll, we'll do some investigating. 